Oh, well, that's... Welcome to The F Word. My name is Molly Connell. I'm the producer of this show. The things you'll hear over the next 45 minutes represent the views of The F Word and the people making them. All opinions, quotations, in no way represent the... Represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producers, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. Oh, welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Molly. I'm Danielle. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Jen. I think we have all been on the show before. So, exciting show we have today. Exciting show. We have decided to address anti-feminism on our show today, um, which is something that I did not really even know about, um, too much about until recently. So let, let's just talk a little bit about how we kind of decided to do the show today. And I'm gonna throw that over to Tiffany. Um, okay, so a few days ago, almost a week ago now, I was just Googling anti-feminism because we talked about it in one of my, a couple of my classes, obvious, in the past, and I wanted to post something. Um, we have a Facebook group where a lot of us organizers and activists kind of communicate with, and I wanted to post something about it, again, maybe an article or something within there so that we could talk about it. And when I Googled anti-feminism, I came across this Facebook page, um, which eventually started a wildfire within the community um i posted it within the group and first danielle posted on their site and then more and more people started posting and we can kind of get into that a little bit but i'll just give you a little background on some of the thing topics that they've touched on on their page uh castration which they link to um you know, men getting circumcised, uh, concentration camps for men that women in Sweden apparently have, which I think is totally far from the truth. Um, I think it's stemming from something about uh, men that rape. Uh, things about how the wage gap is a myth and um, a bunch of other things, including uh, the rape in, that happened in India and saying that it's like this you know, big thing just against Indian men and totally forgetting about the whole, that women were raped. Yeah, so that. let's, <laughs> let's break it down. Let's start with ca male castration and what they have to say about that. Um, I agree that it can, it's gender mutilation. But when you look at the global trend of female genital mutilation and why they mutilate the female genitalia or even trans peoples at birth, they're mutilated, assigned genders. Math the whole idea yeah. of some of the things that they brought up, like just very, very deeply concern me. It just concerned me that this, the issues are being presented so slantedly and this is what they run their entire website on, is this completely skewed presentation of these issues, such as genital mutilation. Feminism, too. I mean, that's, and feminism. What's, that's what yeah. bothers me about it is like all the issues that they brought up were all issues that we all like would like support fighting for or against, depending on the issue, and that we all agree on like many different aspects of it. Like they were talking about homelessness and they were talking about domestic violence, and we were like, n no one is saying no, f like, there's maybe a, a you know, some feminists, but there's like very few feminists who would say that we want to end homelessness for women and not for men, you know? Yeah. And so it's like this idea that feminism is like represent, it, and what's fascinating to me is that there are other ideologies like 
conservatives, for example, who have some crazies that say some things like uh, women can control whether or not they get pregnant if they are like actually raped or something. They they can excuse that and say, oh, well, you know, they're just some crazies that are whatever. They don't represent all of conservatives. But why is it that like in, with feminism that some people who may be more fundamental or extreme or whatever you want to call it uh, represent it, half the population of the entire world. Like that's that to me is like really a problem. And another thing, it's why is it being villainized by the people who are not feminist? Mm -hmm. Why is it anti-feminism? I don't understand why you would be like against. I can understand there are some obviously off the deep end feminists. There are who are misandrist. There is misandry mm -hmm. in some feminist communities. But to label and have a stigma around all feminists that we are all supporting misandry within our communities, which I did not even... Can we just have a little talk about misandry? Because I did not even know what it that was a word until these anti-feminists started throwing it at me. Misandry is man-hating, actual hatred of men, and wanting to act out violently against them. And, you know, that. <laughs> Which I, as a feminist, do not support. Mm -hmm. I do not support man-hating, and I do not support actions that are directly against a certain gender in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And that is, for me, what being a feminist is about. Um, yeah. Um, I, I think you both kind of touched on this a little bit about that it's they're making it seem like all feminists are like the small little part of feminists. And I feminism and I remember way way back when I'd actually bring up different feminist theories and um, I, I touched on it a little bit before but um, you know there's different types of feminist theory even within regular feminist theory and one that kind of they aren't misandrists at all but they do believe that there's something inherently negative within the man which is like the libertarian radical feminists and you know that's one feminist theory that does you know, support not beating men or anything like that, but they do think that, fe like, the women, women are, not libertarian, uh, cultural, uh, radical feminists, that women are inherently better. But I, I don't agree with that. That's not what I am. I think that we all n are born equal. I just think that society... Uh, which is, is where patriarchy comes in you know we're taught to behave in certain ways and we're taught that certain things are the way we're that this is better and this is worse and then they put feminine qualities as being the negative qualities that a human being should have and i don't think uh, um, as i mean our community and collective as a whole all has different ideologies and i'm speaking just purely of milwaukee we all have different ideologies different um movements within the movement that we think are more important but we're all coming together and there's different so what I'm saying is it's it's different people coming together, and I think that that's the way feminism in general, when you're generally saying feminism and you're saying anti-feminism, you're talking about this general group of people with different varied views and varied beliefs and varied topics of what they think is important, and you're trying to put them all together, and you can't say that and that's just like us saying we hate all men. We can't say that we hate all men because that's a very general statement, and that's that's too vague i mean we what we don't like is women being raped women being beat uh women getting paid less women being treated different just because we are and there born may as, be because we're women certain instances where women are paid more but general trends show a wage disparity and let's talk about two where it matters I'm women sorry. were introduced into the workforce to reduce labor costs I, I, I want to talk about, too, where it matters. Like, that's the thing is, like, well, for me, okay, that's the thing is, like, what Tiffany hit it on the head when she's talking about how we're all, like, a group of people that agree on one thing. Women should be treated as human beings, okay? Mm -hmm. There are many different varying aspects of what we think because we're all people. We're not, like, robots of any kind, you know? 
Um, and we, when we say feminism, when we do, and I, you know, there was an, I had a little argument with someone earlier uh, who was saying that you know we shouldn't put people in these boxes and labels and stuff like that. And I've heard that argument before, and I understand it. But I think in this but case, I think in this case that it can actually be kind of unifying to mm -hmm. say we're feminists or we're feminism or we're fighting for you know rights for half the population that is identified as female. And I think that that can be very empowering for people who are oppressed because we are oppressed. We are told we are female. We are forced to be female. We are oppressed. I I also, um, I understand. I understand the argument that by labeling myself as a feminist, I'm categorizing myself <laughs> based on some kind of gender structure. And we are not trying to reinforce the gender binary by what we're doing. We are not trying to categorize people who are feminists in any way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you have to face the reality that women are a target of violence mm -hmm. in our society worldwide. I mean, this is a global struggle, and we're seeing it that fact being raised with um, what's happening in India right now and what's happening in other parts of the world. What's happening in Milwaukee? I just want to say something really, really quick. I, and I know that we both wanted to say something. I just wanted to point out, too, that, yes, as a feminist, I know that I'm somehow inherent, like, just on accident by doing that, like, putting myself in some sort of box as you are with any type of idea identity type as politics whatever but I'm not just a feminist I'm a humanist I'm an environmentalist I'm you know, all these yeah. different things I can go on I mean there's I'm a lot of things I I will fight for uh, LGBT plus or queer whichever work uh, way you like yeah to use um, I believe in those rights. I, I believe in right, like animal rights. I believe in so many different things. It's just one element, an yeah. aspect of who I am. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to fight for the rights of this person or that person. You know, I'm yeah. for uh, the rights of uh, people of oppressed nationalities. It, the list goes on. It just happens that this is, happens to be one aspect of who I am. So See, I mean, this is this is something that's so seemingly troubling to me because. For me, feminism is very clear, and it and it's mm -hmm. you know hearing the three of you s speak about your your take on on feminism and that how you feel that you're automatically labeling yourself into this box or identity. For me, and and what's obviously not clear to this these anti-feminist groups, feminism is simply the equality for women, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you know it's the box has been created by extremists or or by misconception I, I agree with that actually but really so at the accident. base of it it's just mm -hmm. equality for women and mm -hmm. it's not any, anything more or less i mean it is obviously but um and i i i really um i i took my discipline and i did not read any anything that was on the, the anti-feminist uh, Facebook page. I just, I, I couldn't stomach to go there and I didn't. I already knew it was going to be filled with nonsense, so I didn't stomach to go there. But the, um, I kind of got some ideas about it and it was just, it's like, um, you know, they're, they're crying, oh, well, what about, what about Men's rights. Yeah, exactly. What about men's rights? We want men's men to have rights. But right. the thing they is, have rights, though. Yeah. no they one have rights. is trying to take rights away from you because mm -hmm. you are a man. Mm -hmm. No. The, well, they see it. Women I know are that the, having there's their... A women, female body people, have rights. Like... Can, can I just say something quick? I think the reason why um, some men think this is because they're... We're in our society on average, we're in a different community, like a different culture than a lot of the other people, like the mainstream, regular average person in America. What they're being told is that I mean, I come from a very conservative area up north, and what they're being told is that feminism is going to take away the rights of men and take away their power. And uh, it's against essentially some people would even say the Bible and that women are supposed to do this and do that. Um, and that these women are 
man hating that th- those words are always tied to feminism within like tv shows n- normal everyday mm. cul- uh, everyday media and culture so it, it's something that the average person's going to pick up that we are hairy legged really ugly really mean hate man hating le- like we're all we all have to be lesbians Catty, we all have to crazy. be crazy yeah we all have to be this like th- we're all this we can't be anything else and we're not varied and and so we must be against men and that's all we are but that's simply not the truth well i think that there's also besides like the personal take uh mm-hmm. and experiences there what about men's rights perspective comes from well they see that there's different affirmative actions Mm -hmm. uh for women or and you know there are there are some truths to this right but the the, like such as if you're a a man a woman is more uh apt to be put on to be accepted on like state Mm -hmm. medical aid like medicaid or something (laughs) than a man is um unless they have children but there are certain things that women will will get before men however that's because there's already the disparity that exists exactly, with women exactly. and so they don't see that they don't they they the, the information is there but they don't see it and they don't recognize it so they misconstrue it as oh women and all these uh you know different races and genders are getting um privileges that men aren't there the, i i do i am aware of actual real cases where men do become dis- you know straight white males do become disenfranchised by it, it does exist it's not mm-hmm. to totally discredit the thing that does exist but it's also based on the fact that it is like phenomenally present among women uh, among mm-hmm. the female gender so i have a direct response to that because i've been thinking about that a lot lately and the thing is is that in my opinion those things those like ideas come from privilege okay I think they come from male privilege honestly I mean you I'm sorry that for this one struggle it's not about you that we're not (laughs) worrying about you or how it affects you that for once in your life that you have to be disenfranchised just like we have to be. We're not trying to force that on you. But for example, if you're in a room with all women and they want to work on all women's issues, you know, then you, you know, either work on all women's issues and feel a little bit disenfranchised because we're not focusing on you and your issues or you don't. Like, I mean, it's it's one or the other. It's not, we're, no one's trying to offend you. But, you know, and I'm, t- and I'm talking about these guys on the anti-feminist page. I'm talking about the people that are talking about, well, oh, why is there a women's caucus? Why isn't there a man's caucus? Why is there women's fights, but not men's fights? Why are there organizations for women, not for men? It's like, well, because we organized ourselves to fight for our issues. And sorry, it's not about you for a minute, but this is what we're going to do. You know, I don't see why uh, us fighting for our issues is in direct competition to you getting what you want and that is what bothers me about all of this it's privileged and it pisses me off and i mean i what i think is really ironic and kind of funny too well not funny but ironic is that i saw one post of theirs where they're talking about how a man after divorce lost his home and didn't and didn't get his kids and only has to see them on like weekends or something well okay for one um these are also men that are saying that women should stay at home and raise the children so then wouldn't it make sense that if they're getting a divorce that the women would get the kids if that's what they want them to do is raise the children and two it's not that often where the woman does get both the kids and the house from my experiences with and obviously this is not everyone's but my experiences with my family and other people who have gotten divorced the women woman usually has to move out or gets the house until the divorce is settled and gets some type of settlement they don't I, typically I get the house. And I, well, I'm, what I'm just saying is that they're using this as an example of, like, women should just leave. And then they were saying, like, another woman was wondering if because and they're finding these really out there, like, 
like uh, examples, which I'm sure are very rare. Like this one woman was getting divorced and was wondering if she would still be entitled to half of her now ex-husband's pension. Not every woman when they're getting divorced is trying to go after that. So don't be grouping us all together. And two, something that was written on there as a comment was, I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna use a different word because I don't want to because we can't use certain words on here oh, so sorry. keep in mind I, I so, so so keep in mind well it's 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 the big the big one i'm doing quotes right now the um, f word yes the other f word <laughs> the other um f -word. but they said so if i i'm thinking about getting a divorce for my wife so should i every and i'm not going to have sex with her any every every day so does that mean i get to have, i'm entitled to have sex with her every week then or something like that. I don't know if it was week or every other day or something like that or whenever I want because he's trying to use that as a comparison to a woman wondering about getting half the pension of her ex-husband when they're divorced. But and it's just like, um, I don't think that's the same thing for one and for two. Again, repeat again. Not every woman when they're getting a divorce because they're saying that this is a, a re this is an example of what happens because of feminism is that now women are going to want the pension of their divorced husband not everybody cares about that some people just want to get, get out of that relationship and that marriage we want uh, women the feminist movement really started for in, in america starting with women getting property rights after divorce and getting rights to their children and getting all this kind of stuff because they didn't have any rights at all. But that does not mean that every woman is out to get their now ex-husband's pension when they die. I mean, come on. <laughs> and if you want to talk about divorce, I know a woman. Okay. Um, my grandmother's age, let's just say, when she, when this person went to go get a divorce, they told her, what are you thinking? How will you survive without your husband? <laughs> like, I just don't understand anti-feminism. I can understand how you would not want to associate yourself or label yourself a feminist. I can understand it. I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. But I don't understand why you're actively, why would you want to act, actively fight <laughs> against it? It's like actively fighting against, like, human rights. Yeah. People, I know. I don't get thing. it. People, people do don't, do people it don't get it. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing with, like, when I was up north and going to high school, people wearing white power shirts. Ugh. Like, it's, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, all we're talking about is having equality or a chance to have equality, you know? It's not saying... Yeah. We're going to go out and, like, harass you or we want you to have to go or through what we went through, growing, you know, in our lives. It's not we want to take anything away from oh, men to right. achieve equality. Exactly. Men are negatively <laughs> impacted by patriarchy as well. Yeah. And I don't understand why, because I consider myself a feminist, people automatically assume that I want to attack men and the male bodied people well i think it also boils down to a um something that also is is like patriarchy kind of showing its ugly face in society um outspoken women are in general considered crazy considered mm -hmm. uh dramatic like, oh considered <laughs> uh I, the B word, which I've been way too much profanity this show, but so I should calm it down. But the B word, okay, like, I mean, seriously, like, outspoken women, you're, you're not supposed to be an outspoken woman in general society. Now, there are, I mean, obviously, there are, you know, exceptions. There are, like, you know, heroines that are very strong and, like, that kind of stuff, obviously. But, like, in general, like, if you're doing it in practice and you're dealing with three outspoken women here who can vouch for this, like... You have to defend yourself constantly. You have to keep a show up constantly. Apologize. You have to make sure to apologize. And then we for do yourself. it to each other too. Like mm -hmm. we we don't call each other the things that she was just talking about, but we get like the sometimes defensive. Sometimes we do. Well, sometimes yeah, sometimes. We do. When, but she's being crazy. So yeah, but more. I think. Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm just saying like, and I like, I think I was getting I was talking more about the defensive things. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we do that too. But I was going more in that direction i think more often than calling each other crazy which women do it all the time i think we more so get more defensive 
and use those type of things and we get you know we talked about on other shows about competition because we've been trained like whether conscious or subconscious of it where if another strong woman comes in the room we need to, oh, that's the person I have to be in competition with. And most of the time, we don't even realize we're doing it until it's already happening and we're butting heads. And I think what makes us a target as feminists is because if you say, if you are a woman who will outwardly, openly, freely say that you're a feminist, I mean, there's a connotation of you being a strong person with that. Because there are people who actively fight against feminism. I can't which is the anti-feminism. Let me just... I pulled up this... Wait, wait I just want to say something quick before you change into that. Okay. Quick. I was just going to say something that I've noticed. So I've always... Since we're on this topic quick, it'll take me like literally 30 seconds. I've noticed exactly what you, gir- you girls have been talking about, about being strong woman. But I, I just want everybody to know. Okay, so I have a tattoo on my arm that's like feminist symbol with like the fist. And then it says revolt. Since I've gotten that tattoo, even more and more people can't talk to me they like i've always been kind of because i've been strong where i over time i've become this person where i don't talk to people unless they talk to me first because of things that i've had to go through being in a really conservative area with dealing what we just talked about but like more less and less people are starting to actually converse with me and i don't know if what what the reason is if it's because i'm like outwardly if they haven't seen my tattoo outwardly doing all this kind of stuff about this stuff is proof of patriarchy yeah the fact that we are here talking about this the fact that we are coming together and organizing as women is proof of this and to be anti-feminist is just it's sick it's (laughs) i don't want to offend anyone but it's just like it is sick. I'm sorry. I'm not worried about offending anybody. I don't care. I, that's <laughs> that is patriarchy. D- worrying about offending no, someone when we're standing up for ourselves. If you want to be anti-feminist, you have every right to be anti-feminist. I don't but here so. is why it is wrong, because I still think it's gross. It's, I mean, yeah. I have a right to that opinion. It is anti-organize organi- anti-equality. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's what it boils down boils down to yeah i've seen women on this page agreeing with the people with the people say which really bothers me i think think it also boils down to a lack of understanding of what feminism actually is Mm -hmm. people don't people think of feminism as being like one thing one group one you know whatever and and tiffany pointed it out really well earlier you know when talking about just the variety of people that are involved so i think it's also just a misunderstanding and people need to do their homework first if they're going to start fighting against something because we will squash you (laughs) because we're smarter than you because we know about this stuff hell this is what i go (sighs) to school for (laughs) (laughs) molly go well i hope nobody's mad i really honestly don't want people to feel attacked. I don't want anyone who does not agree with what we say on the show to feel attacked. I don't, because I don't want that to be what this show is about. I want it to be us addressing why Here, I got why a, I we got a, have a problem with anti-feminism. I got a good way to put and, it for you. We're, we're not attacking them, we're confronting them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we, I, I talked to this anti-feminism group that's on Facebook. There's an anti-feminism group on Facebook. Go look at it. Go look at it. Get mad. Um, but yeah, I talked to this anti-feminist Feel group on troll. Facebook, and I <laughs> said, be on our show. Come on our show. And they blocked me from Facebook. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to get in a discussion with them about why they feel the way they do trying to point out the skewed arguments in some of the links they were posting to me i gave them a link to ebscohost a website that hosts Mm -hmm. academic journals and told them to search and find you know some really good information about your point of view which they can't do you can't i'm sorry you can't um but the point is That I was met with comments such as, no need to shout, simple one. What? And I was met with, your point? I was met with, yawn. Why don't you just read it for us? I'm not going to read the whole thing. Okay. Because I'm not going to waste my time. But my point is that 
That's the response from anti-feminists. A lot of times, when we come up with points, stop whining. When we Calm prove down. them wrong, simple one. That really bothers me. Like that right there explains exactly what this page is about. They, <laughs> they just called you simple one. They see women as being lesser than them, and if, that if is you why they're anti-feminist. The conversation, it's on the F word Tumblr. So if you go on Tumblr, and so I want to throw out something because of the conversation we were just having about attacking or confronting or whatever. Um, I don't feel like I'm attacking anybody. I feel like I'm confronting people who are directly opposed to my liberation. Mm -hmm. And my liberation is really important to me, just like the liberation of all peoples is important to me. And I think feminism is deeply ingrained in that. And so... I'm speaking out against those people, and I'm not going to waste my time trying to convince them of anything because obviously, with conversations that all of us had with them, no, like there was no convincing that was going to be happening. Um, wh who was it that said power concedes nothing without a demand? Yeah, I don't know. But I the point is, is that power concedes nothing without a demand, and uh, there is n that means that patriarchy is not going to. Frederick, 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 Douglas. Frederick Douglas. Thank, Thank you. you for that one, Frederick um, Douglas. And that's really <laughs> appropriate because today is Martin Luther King Day, and we today haven't addressed that Martin yet. So Day. happy birthday, Martin Luther King. Yeah, can we just take a moment um, to talk about Martin Luther King Day? Mm -hmm. I had the honor of attending the Peace Action event today. Um, and if anyone was listening from that, it was a wonderful event. Um, the inauguration was today, mm -hmm. too. It was a really big day. I saw this really funny. Did you guys know that Lupe Fiasco got kicked <laughs> out because of his anti-war rant that he did? <laughs> and he called out Obama, and they kicked him out of the inauguration. That's right. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> and also, um, who was it? Oh, I saw this little meme of Michelle Obama sitting next to John Bain Boehner, and John Boehner said something to Brock, and he, like, laughs, and Michelle Obama, like, obviously rolls Can her eyes. Can we also talk it's about so how Beyonce funny. just ripped out her earpiece and rocked the national anthem? <laughs> oh my god, I was in tears. I'm not even kidding. Lupe Fiasco getting kicked out. <laughs> oh yeah, and okay, let's go back to Lupe Fiasco. Yeah, thank you. But, I, I, oh my I, god. I like that. I really like Michelle Obama rolling her eyes at John Boehner, though. That was funny. Yeah. There, there was, was booze. Funny. There was audible booze. <gasps> you know who else when we should talk When they about? announced John Boehner. Ooh. I have another one we should talk about because this is a women's show and this is a local woman, Margaret Roska, the the um, widow of Father Grappi, who was the basically local civil rights leader mm -hmm. um, of his time and also the president of Local 998, who um, the Local 998 it, it was just named, well, ATU was just named by The Nation magazine as the most progressive union. So uh, lots of connections and awesome people. Um, but anyway, she did a speech today at the Madison uh, in the Capitol they were honoring Grappi and they were giving her an award to like accept in his honor because he's passed and she was doing this speech and Walker was there and he was sitting right behind her and she did this speech and she just called him out and it was the coolest thing she's <laughs> like as a you know someone who comes from you know uh, a family of union members or something and or no no she said she was talking about how Father Grappi was the president of 998 and she's like I would say that anyone who stands up against union rights does not stand up in the tradition of, of Dr. King or in, Fa in Father Grappi and then lots of cheers. And then she like said like another thing about like the environment and she said another thing about voting rights and it was just like the same thing. I would say that they do not stand up with Father And she's like, but now I want to talk about the people that do stand up. And she called out Voces, she called out Palermos, she called out uh, oh, well, Overpass Light Brigade, um, she called out all the people that are fighting for the Penicky Hill stuff. And it was just like, and Walker just had to sit there and take it, and, and the whole crowd was <laughs> cheering, and it was so cool. So thank you, Margaret Roska. That was so awesome. <laughs> That's I awesome. just, like, <laughs> <laughs> it just hurts my heart when a woman says she's an anti-feminist. <laughs> it literally, it hurts my heart. <laughs> I am not kidding. I know. It just does. It just does mm -hmm. because it's like, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. I can say like I can kind of s I can see like um I because don't uh, no get no it. I don't I, I can see not anti-feminist but going back to 
not calling themselves a feminist um, because in the tradition of you know the history of feminism it has been tied more with um, the petty bourgeoisie white woman so I can understand if you are not in that grouping to be a little hesitant to first come out as a feminist Mm -hmm. uh, without knowing that there are different types of feminism and realizing that you probably most likely can fall within a certain ideology within feminism Um, but I cannot ever see a woman calling herself an anti-feminist and I was looking over the anti-feminist uh, page on Facebook earlier today just to kind of remind m- myself some of the things that were on there and I saw numerous v- different women of different backgrounds speaking uh, uh, in support of this page and it really sickened me and some sa- some people said oh I used to be a feminist but now I'm an anti-feminist and I totally agree with everything you say all these people want is to destroy men and destroy their power and their world and want to get all their man's money and it's it's i mean i don't know what what they know about the world or about people around them if this is the belief system that they can eventually come to and especially someone who once called themselves a feminist to actually say this type of stuff if they truly knew what feminism was about i truly think that it's a survival let me just i just want to say i want to say this because i think this is important to address before we had the show is over I think it's kind of a survival mechanism for women because the thing is is that our our material existence really is bound up by what the men around us think Mm -hmm. okay i mean we can talk about you know like you know relationships that end or uh like bosses that are able to make our lives really awful and horrible or any you know all these people who have influence and how our lives completely can be changed or destroyed based on what these men think of us. So I think a lot of times, especially if there isn't a strong support network of all the people who Mm -hmm. aren't doing that to them, um, there's these paradigms that women are supposed to fit into. And we're not supposed to be outspoken. We're not supposed to demand what we want. We're not supposed to demand, you know, to be this way. We're supposed to be uh, submissive and nice and uh, kind and accepting and loving. I don't know, whatever the words that they want to use. And I want to be all those things too, except for submissive. But I'm just saying that, like, the point is, is that, like, I think this comes from a societal issue of autumn. I've just read it. Who posted a study? One of you guys posted a study. You, Molly, this morning posted a study about how when women get angry versus when men get angry. And m- women, when they get angry, are seen as incompetent. They're not seen as, like, legitimized in their anger. They're disenfranchised and seen as incompetent. Even, and that happens everywhere. You know what's ironic about that is that I've noticed when I get angry, and, you know, one of my guy friends is right here. You can probably agree. Even if you don't agree with certain things that I do. When I get angry, I get over analytical about everything and get over logical and get over all those things. So I find it funny that all of a sudden I'm labeled as crazy and incompetent when, yeah. though you may not agree with what I do, it's because <laughs> I'm over analyzing the Ill- how much this logically does not make sense right. what, some, what a man or whoever is doing to me. And right. it drives me... That right. drives me crazy. Right. Be, and that, and you know what? I mean, sure, when I was younger, there are times I got submissive. But even when I get, like, when I'm having a fight or I get broken up with, when when I do these things that are labeled crazy, I am not being submissive with it. I'm, I am being like, no, this is what I want and this is what should be happening. You are being, and I'll call out what's what's wrong with what they're doing because it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But you often get punished for being like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that and it sucks. And then we, I do get to the point, though, where I do, I, I'll admit it, I start to feel guilty, but I don't stop it, but I still feel guilty. But that's when I text oh. one of my friends that are a girl or my closest guy friend or whoever who will, but Understood. thankfully my closest guy friend understands women a little more than the average Man, but I I've think the majority with, so. of I think I think a lot of not the majority, but I think a lot of women though that are, we're talking about that stand up for anti feminism or whatever are facing this dilemma of facing mm-hmm. this dilemma of, the right of their own survival, system. and they probably and they love men. I mean, there's men in their lives that they love that they don't want to hate on or anything like that. So I think it's a, a combination of ignorance about the issue as well as the kind and of and I also not having a support say, system I, either. I also want to say, um, ignorance about the issue is a problem um but it also it just goes beyond that because i know we're using anti-feminism as kind of as the platform for our show tonight and i also want to bring up that anti-feminism 
I'm sure is a radical example of our, the criticisms we face. But it's an example that I wanted to use with doing this show tonight of a blatant example of what we are trying to go up against. And it's not that we don't read what they post. Uh, or It's not that we don't research what the anti-feminist movement, you know, is saying as an active criticism of what we're doing. But when I pull up their page and the first thing on their page is a woman of carrying a bunch of shoes that this little meme is on their front page right now. And it just says feminism. And it says, because how else can a white middle class child of privilege qualify for affirmative action? Oh that God. and you want to know what that is not what feminism is about. <laughs> what? I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I love that. But this is what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> if this is their platform that they're running the anti-feminist movement on, you need to question that before you align yourself with a group like that. If you honestly believe that then hey, anti-feminism is for you. But you want to know what? If you honestly believe that without researching affirmative action and without researching feminism and what it is and looking into the issues... Well, it's also that, researching uh, and really understanding privilege. Too. I mean, say that again. They they said, how else is a, is a privileged, a white male... Mm -hmm privileged middle class supposed well, to get well, ahead yeah. or well, whatever. I mean, it, a privileged it, woman. What, what this meme is that we're talking about here online, you can go to the anti-feminist group on Facebook and Did see it Did you just too. see the Yoda one it, too? That one was kind of ridiculous. It mm -hmm. has this meme of this girl holding a bunch of shoes and it says feminism at the top and on the bottom it says because how else can a white middle class child of privilege qualify for an affirmative action? I am a white middle class child of privilege but that has nothing to do with my struggles as a woman. And, like, that's real. But the word privilege. <sighs> but, I mean, it, it shouldn't so discount. It shouldn't discount, like, the struggle that women have. I don't even understand what their argument with this is. It's right next to a thing that is bashing public breastfeeding. But the word, the word like, privilege should actually be out of there because you're still a woman. You may have... Sure, more privileges than yeah. some other women because of the other things that are listed there, white and middle class. Um, but you are still a woman, so there's still things that you do not have privileges to. Right. I mean, we're talking about, like, forms of oppression, and forms of oppression, like, compound on each other. So, like, yeah, hell yeah, I am privileged as a white person, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but compared to a white man, like, I am part of the oppressed group. So, I mean, it's, I'm not defending my privilege at all. Um, I'm just saying, like, their approach to what feminism is about, they're completely discounting, like, the majority of feminists in the world, which is people of color. And by just talking mm -hmm. about white women, like, that's offensive to, to women of color who are no, fighting on the front lines for this struggle. And they do, like, that's what they don't understand. They don't understand the real implications of these things. And then the other women that are white, they are not all middle class or above. And what about the white women who have been raped? What about the white women who have been in abusive relationships? Are they privileged just because they're white women? No. Um, they're, they're be again, they're going, we're going back to this general statement. It's going back to a general belief. And like I said before, yes, in the history, in, throughout history, we can see that at one point it was mainly white middle-class women who were the feminists, but it's changed since then, and again, there's various forms of feminism. So this is being too general, it's offensive, and it, the word, going back to oppression, when you are a woman or identify as a woman, you are oppressed because you are missing some of the, pro you are lacking some of the privileges that men get. And, that go and one example is, uh, wage gap, which they apparently the anti-feminists believe is a myth, and they can t they apparently they can inform you on how it is in fact a myth and has been proven to be a myth, which is complete 
BS. <laughs> I hate patriarchy. Can we go to final thoughts? Because it's 9.55. It's 9.55. And I'm ready to that do my final five thoughts. five minutes late on final thoughts. <laughs> All right. So final thoughts. I am ready to go on my final thoughts. <laughs> I hate patriarchy. It is so sick. It makes me so sad because all of the people that we're talking about uh, that are fighting for these things and stuff like that, I mean, honestly, I'm sorry, but they are not informed. They don't understand the issues, and it makes me sad. The mm -hmm. ignorance makes me sad. It also makes me sad the women that support this stuff because it women are in competition with each other for their own survival, uh, what to be respected to be accepted, to be X, Y, Z, to be successful. You know, we have all these pressures because of the wonderful feminists that came before us to be successful in X, Y, Z. It's not acceptable for us to be housewives. You know, housewives are looked down upon a lot. But then on the other side of it, feminists are looked down upon or people who are, are trying to be successful or strong women. It's, we can't do anything right, is my point. Mm -hmm. No matter what, we're villainized. No matter who we are, we're villainized. And it's because of patriarchy. And that's my final thought. My final thought, I hate patriarchy, but I hate matriar the idea of matriarchy just as much. I think there are equally as oppressive ideas. And to assume that because I'm a feminist, I would want to push an agenda where one gender <laughs> or where your role in society is defined by your physical gender is wrong. Patriarchy oppresses trans people. Patriarchy oppresses women. Patriarchy oppresses anyone that is not a male-bodied person. And it also oppresses them, too, because it has expectations And it also them. oppresses them, too. And I just want it to be out there for everyone listening where, we're, where we are coming from as people, as people that identify as feminists. So, um, and as a feminist, I actively um, campaign for issues that are not just strictly related to my personal gender. My scope is not just women, because I am a woman and I am a feminist. It's a human rights issue. And that's my final thought. <laughs> oh, final thought from Jen. <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense. I hate patriarchy as well, right? <laughs> so um, it, to try to make sense of anti-feminists is trying to make sense of skinheads, of, of Hitler, of, you know, just, it's, they're all off the wall. There, there's, um, there's a lot of misunderstanding around it, and, hmm, it's a slippery slope to spend a lot of energy trying to understand it, and, um, and trying to do something about it. And um, I don't know, can you have a really engaging conversation with, with these anti-feminists to try to change it around? Is there something you can do to help them change around? I don't know. My final thought is I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know what we can do to change the way these people are being informed because we're never going to be able to actually have a conversation with them until they're informed. I mean, obviously, there's some answers like um, in high school or middle school having certain classes on um, various human rights issues, including women's struggles, um, queer struggles, race issues, all these various things, but is that still going to keep people informed? No, because who remembers half the stuff they learned at, at a given age? I don't know what we can do, but the plain fact that women have to label themselves anti-feminist because of what we have to deal with on a normal basis uh, and that we need the approval of anybody, whether it's male, w women, or men, is in itself... An example of that we are, like that we are oppressed that we have to do certain things in order to survive and I it sickens me and it saddens me and 
I wish there was something that we could do to, to change that, but unfortunately we can't. And that's why we have to do what we have been doing. That's why we are feminists, because people feel they have to be anti-feminists. <laughs> so. I don't understand. Okay, it's 10 o'clock, and we finished our final thoughts by 10 o'clock. And thank you for listening, and thank you for your comments. Genuinely, oh. thank you for your c constructive comments. Don't turn it off We yet. also want to announce a little event coming up. We have some of us in the community. Um, everyone on the show tonight is um, working with an organization called Step by Step Collective. And that is an organization that's going to be organizing an event on Valentine's Day, February 14th. It is an, uh, an alternative Valentine's Day against violence. Non-cute, non-kitschy date night. So um, we are going to be addressing some of the issues we talk about on our show and um, a few others. Um, there's going to be music and food and poetry and art and workshops and other activists. So that is February 14th at 6 p.m. And that's going to be at the People's Church, which is on the People's Church. Where's All the people's, people's Church? The All, All people's, people's Church, Church. 2600 North 2nd Street. Yes, so that's the All People's Church on 2600 North 2nd Street. February 14th, an alternative Valentine's Day, 6 p.m. Um, yeah, so just wanted to put that event out there and let you know, listeners, that that's happening. And we'd love to see you. Like us on Facebook, the Step by Step Collective. Yeah, like <laughs> us on Facebook. Um, have a great night.